Remembering things from before you were born is actually possible. This ties in with Carl Jung's work on collective consciousness, but that doesn't mean that we share memory between people. Memories can be inherited, and we're only just starting to understand how. You see, there are different kinds of memory. There's episodic, and that's what we consider as our memories of past events, like, say, your eighth birthday party. There's semantic, which is apparently a word that people don't know. This is where you remember general thoughts or ideas. An example might be how to bake a cake. And then we have procedural memory, and this is the kind of thing that can be inherited. This is why children raised in total isolation can still learn how to walk. It's in your genetics. We as humanity recently found out that fearful memories can be inherited. Mice who have been shocked in the presence of, say, the smell of lavender will continue to be fearful of lavender even if they've never been exposed to it or the original great-grandparent that was shocked. And we know that your experiences can haunt your descendants. We've seen people who have been exposed to extremely stressful situations have offspring or grandchildren who are more likely to have anxiety or other psychiatric problems. If your grandparents suffered from starvation, you're more likely to be overweight or have diabetes. Turns out the answer to how is epigenetics. Or for this one, how RNA interacts with the way that your genes can be expressed. RNA can actually bind to DNA and prevent polymerase from using it. What I do wonder, and I really badly want an answer to, is how the person that you get tissue from to make a brain to operate a robot influences its behavior. Somebody needs to tell me.